Welcome to this podcast segment of A Beautiful Day to Learn. My name is Abigail at samahan niyo ako with various discussions on education, journalism, communication, language, and literature. Today, we will have a discussion on the brief history of campus journalism in the Philippines. But before that, may isang dyaryo muna akong ipapakita sa inyo. The first newspaper published in the Philippines, as per record ha, was a sheet called Del Superior Gobierno, Spanish na Spanish. The first issue came out on August 8, 1811. At sino nga kaya yung editor? It was the Governor General or yung pinatawag nating Gobernador General. And during that era, ang pinaka GG o Gobernador General ay si Manuel Gonzalez de Aguilar. Well, there was no regular publication date at nag appear lamang siya kapag may mga balita mula sa Europa. It lasted only over a period of six months during which time there were 15 issues published. The last issue appeared on February 7, 1812, still under Pareni G.G. Manuel Gonzalez de Aguilar. So the history of campus journalism really started in the collegiate level. It began with UST or the University of Santo Tomas. Pinablish ng UST yung El Liliputiense, galing siya sa word na Liliputia ng ibig sabihin ay tiny or small person. So maybe during that time, they were thinking of tiny people with big voices. That was in 1890. Two years after, sumunod na po yung remaining three. First is the Torch of the Philippine Normal University, then the Gidon of Ateneo de Manila, and still from UST, the Varsitarian. Ano nga kaya yung Gidon? but kaya yun ang name for ADMU? Yung Gidon, it means a small flag, and yung flag na yan ay makikita nyo sa mismong nameplate ng Jario ng Ateneo. The school paper is really part of a student's life. Kaso, minsan, nalilimutan nila as to how many student writers are existing, how much cooperation and technical skills were required before a particular student received the latest news, comments, feature stories, literary articles. Mas madalas kasi nakikita lang ng students ay andun ba sila sa dyaryo? Andun kaya yung class nila or yung section nila? Nakipag-compete nga ba sila sa iba at sila'y nanalo? Or kung sila ba ang na-feature? At aling picture naman kaya nila ang inilagay? High school student publications are almost as old as the Philippine public school system itself. A highly centralized public school system was installed in 1901 by the Philippine Commission by the virtue of Act No. 74. The implementation of this act created a heavy shortage of teachers. That's why you can see on top two pictures. And these are the thomasites. Bakit nagkaroon ng thomasites? Kasi nga nagkaroon ng shortage ng teachers sa Pilipinas. Kaya yung Philippine Commission, inauthorized nila yung Secretary of Public Instruction na magdala ng 600 teachers from the United States of America papunta sa Pilipinas. For instance, the first Manila High School, which we now call as the Araulio High School, it was actually under the editorship of Carlos P. Romulo. Nag-start silang mag-put out ng main biograph student paper na ang tawag is The Coconut. So, yung school year niyan was 1911 up to 1912. Yung mimeograph, yan yung machine na ginamit nila. It is a low-cost duplicating machine that works by forcing ink through a stencil on paper. So, merong ink, merong stencil, merong paper. So, pag na-press yung ink dun sa stencil, mapupunta siya dun sa paper. Pero, sino nga ba si Carlos P. Romulo? Carlos was a reporter at the age of 16, a newspaper editor by the age of 20, and a publisher at 32. Hashtag goals in life. 
and he was the only Asian to win the Pulitzer Prize in Journalism for a series of articles. Ano kaya tong articles na to? He predicted the outbreak of World War II. All in all, Romulo wrote and published 18 books. Dami! Student publication was introduced in our country shortly after its wide adoption in the American high schools and colleges. Ibig sabihin, nag-spread muna siya sa America and when it was fully embedded, saka lang din siya na-spread sa atin. It was introduced as an extracurricular activity. Imagine, extracurricular? Back in my elementary days, Pag sinabing extracurricular, ibig sabihin may bearing yan or extra points na makaka-add up sa standing or honors mo. Like if you're going to become a valedictorian or salutatorian. So sinabi natin na karon siya ng widespread adoption in the United States at yung first high school paper ay pinapaniwalaang na publish noong 1851. However, it was not until the early 1920s that student journalism had gained the acceptance in the American high schools. Sa Philippine setting, La Union Tab was the first regularly issued printed high school paper. It was published in 1923. So, sinasabi that it is considered as the pioneer high school newspaper. Yung principal nun was... Gabino Tabunar. Since then, other pioneer high school papers also came out after the other. So we have here the Pampangan, the Leitean, the Rizalian, the Coconut, the Soil, and the Samarinian. Have you noticed something dun sa mga names ng school papers na to? First, either they are named after the geographical location or second, the main product or source of living in their area or location. In addition, meron tayong the melting pot, the granary, the tourist torch, the Cagayan student chronicler. Oh, bakit kaya naging melting pot? Does this have any concern with witchcraft? Some kinda Harry Potter ang peg? For your information, Tarlac is called the melting pot because it borders Pampanga to the south, Nueva Ecija to the east, Pangasinan to the north, and Zambales to the west. Ibig sabihin, nasa gitna si Tarlac. Dagdag yan sa vocabs natin ha. Melting pot refers to a place where different people, styles, culture, traditions are mixed. And then yung granary naman ng Nueva Ecija High School. We consider Nueva Ecija as the largest province in their region and also one of the highest producers of rice grains and byproducts in the country. So yung granary, ibig sabihin yan ay stack room or store room ng mga rice grains. So another vocabs check. By 1931, there were 106 high schools in our country. Since then, kahit walang regulatory memorandum or circular urging high schools to publish a school paper, organized high schools followed so Nagsulputan. Out of those 106 high schools, 30 yung merong school papers na register dun sa ating Bureau of Public Schools. By 1950, the student papers increased to 169. By 1954, naging 253. Nung 1975, naging 500. Nung 1986, more than 900 English and Filipino secondary school papers were being published. Para minang para me. Ibig sabihin, expected na parami rin ng parami ang ating student writers or journalists. The first significant regulation governing the putting up of high school papers na nagbigay ng different requirements ay yung Circular Letter Number 34 Series of 1929. It was actually based on a service manual and was issued by the Bureau of Education signed by Director Luther B. Bewley. Again, Bewley. Yung Bureau of Education ngayon, tawag dyan ay DepEd. Siyempre, may mga requirements. Pilipinas pa ba? Among these requirements were dapat capable ang teachers to be available to supervise all the steps of the paper's production from the conceptualization up to the circulation. Finances must be sufficient to avoid seeking subscriptions and to prevent financial embarrassment to the faculty. 
Mahirap kasi kapag si advisor ang sumasagot ng pag-publish. Dapat merong enough funds yung school para masuportahan yung pag-publish ng mga school papers. And lastly, last requirement, there must also be a printer or printing press available to produce a credible paper. And take note, based on that circular, X or big no-no ang poor printing and faulty English. By October 22, 1945, the acting executive officer John H. McBride Jr. from the Department of Instruction and Information sent a letter to all division superintendents quoting provisions from the service manual stating school papers should consist mainly of articles related to school activities that they should be free from advertisements from questionable jokes and cartoons and from worthless poetry and prose when it comes to the birth of manila city newspapers This would be the chronology at nabanggit na natin ang ilan a while ago. 1911 to 1912, The Coconut. 1930, Torres Torch. 1940, Mapazet. 1940, The Chronicler. Then, nagkaroon ng war. This was the World War II. It was expected na everything would be shut off. Everything would stop. But the rest of the campus newspapers were born after the World War II. The list of Manila high school publications with their Filipino paper counterparts can be seen in the succeeding slides. Ito yung tinatawag nilang 1967 list, although samples lang yung ipapakita ko here. So yung The Coconut ay na-rename into The Wall at yung Filipino version niya is Ang Moog. The Torres Torch, Filipino version, Ang Sulo. The Mapazet, Ang Gabay. The Chronicler, Ang Tambuli. The Power, Ang Lakas. The Gazette, Ang Tinig. The Wheel, siyempre, Ang Gulong. In 1952, formal classroom instruction began. Ibig sabihin, naging part siya ng curriculum. And it was Mrs. Sarah, hindi ko di but Sarah England, an American teacher of MAPA High School who experimented with the teaching of journalism. Since yung experiment niya was proven successful, syempre hindi papatalong other schools. The other four existing high schools in the city followed suit in formalizing classroom instruction of journalism. So yan po yung Araulio, Torres, Arellano, Abad Santos High School. Ika nga, hashtag competitive yarn. These schools formally offer journalism as a vocational subject, holding classes on a daily double period throughout the school year. So, daily na siya, double period pa. Pag sinabing double period, dalawang beses yung schedule niya sa loob ng isang araw. Since then, journalism has been under the supervision of English supervisors, but the grades are considered vocational subjects. Now you know kung bakit nasa curriculum ng Bised English ang campus journalism. This subject is being entrusted to you. By 1964, Mrs. Clehenia San Juan, the department head of English in Araulio High School, was appointed as journalism supervisor. So we can see that during the 1960s, dyan nag-start yung ating journalism supervisor or media supervisor. And from here, we can say that the rest is indeed history. Since Manila is the capital of our country and numerous schools were established due to its population, at least four to six issues a year or one kada grading period, ang napapublish in both elementary and secondary schools. Minsan pa nga doble kasi merong English, merong Filipino version. Though at present, of course, nagkaroon tayo ng drastic changes due to the pandemic, but surely things will get back on track and opportunities for digital newspapers also proliferated naman. Campus journalism serves as the voice of the students. Student journalists can act as messengers of the student body in terms of campus, local, and national concerns and issues. It also improves the communication skills of the students. Kasi, 
nagkakaroon sila ng different tasks such as editing, writing, proofreading, headline writing, captioning, and marami pang ING forms. That's why knowing the history of campus journalism in our country is also vital for it lays the foundation of our freedom of opinion and expression. Once again, this is Abigail of A Beautiful Day to Learn and I hope that you learned something about the history of campus journalism in our country. God bless everyone!